Hello everyone. I hope this message finds you fit and fine. My name is Shashank Tyagi and I welcome you all to this class. Please confirm that my voice is fine. Just mention in comments and we are all set to start. In our previous class, in our journey in part 3, Fundamental Rights, we were discussing Article 21. And within that discussion, I mentioned Menika Gandhi case and how it enhanced the power of Supreme Court from procedure established by law to due process of law. It means now judicial review was happening in context of both executive as well as legislative actions of the government. And when I say legislative, it means legislature. After that, I mentioned <coughs> Mohini Jain case, Unni Krishnan case and how all three cases made the background for inclusion of Article 21A, Right to Education. I hope you remember. So today, <coughs> we are going to start from Article 21A. As you can see, the language, state shall provide. It means it will be responsibility of state. Now the point is, our constitution was already having provisions with respect to a state having this responsibility towards education of children. But this is mentioned in DPSP, Directive Principles of State Policy, which are not enforceable by court. Right? By inclusion of these principles in fundamental right made them enforceable by court. It means children belonging to this age group, if they are not having education service in their vicinity, vicinity that's a criteria that administration is going to decide, then they can actually claim that I am not having this facility, then the state is bound to provide that. Now, my point is, can you actually mention one government scheme which take care of nutritional and preliminary education aspect of children before six years of age? Can you mention in that in comment? Come on. I'm repeating my question. I'm saying right to education, Article 21A, make this mandatory over, over the state to provide free and compulsory education for children between 6 to 14 years. My question is, can you mention a government scheme which takes care of nutritional and preliminary education aspect of children before 6 years of age? Government scheme I am asking. Answer is ICDS, Integrated Child Development Scheme. You must have heard about Anganwadi centers. So, Anganwadi centers are established under this scheme. Okay. Now, this Article 21A was added through 86 Constitutional Amendment Act. That's a fact. Now, <coughs> this is clear to you. Now, talking about Article 22, the language says, protection of life and personal liberty with respect to these two words are used in this particular article punitive and preventive detention first understand this the difference and then we are going to decide uh, discuss what kind of protection we are talking about okay now punish a person for an offense means when the word punitive is mentioned it means you have committed some crime administration has proved that you have committed some crime on these grounds this detention will happen Okay, even if you have not committed, but why you are going to be arrested? Because they have a proof that you have committed that crime. Okay, but when it comes to preventive detention, it means police department do not have any proof and they, they also do not consider that you have committed some crime, but they are detaining you for prevention, prevention of law and order because you can be a security issue if you are left you know, alone freely in this society. Okay, we discussed this preventive detention in A.K. Gopalan case as well when I mentioned section 14. Now, the prime focus of this article 22 is the facility which is provided to you. It means if you are arrested, say in case of punitive detention, then it says who is arrested shall be detained in custody without being informed. It means you should be informed. Informed should be the keyword. 
and you should be allowed to consult a lawyer legal practitioner of your choice number two these are two rights and within 24 hours you should be produced before a nearby magistrate and this particular provision is also connected with this fact that if magistrate allows that you should be free then you should be free okay it means your detention beyond 24 hours will happen only on the direction of magistrate so this protection is available to you in case of arrest that is what or you can say retention that is what article 22 is talking about also keep in mind the these rights are not available to enemy alien or person detained under prevented detention law now i'm asking consider someone is arrested for example in case of delhi rights many people were arrested under uapa okay unlawful activities prevention act okay is it mandatory that if someone is arrested under UAPA, that person should be produced before magistrate within 24 hours? This is a question in front of you because there were many articles in news regarding UAPA and some of the provisions which were questioned that uh, these are draconian provisions and abused. So that's a question from you for you. UAPA star point. Okay. Now, the 44th Amendment Act 1978, so it reduced the period of detention about obtaining the opinion of an advisory board from 3 to 2 weeks. Now, what is the context? In case you are detained in, say, with regard to preventive detention, then the law says you cannot be detained beyond 3 months. If you are detained beyond 3 months, then it can be done on the direction of an advisory board and high court judges can be member of this advisory board okay now but three month detention can be done right now 44th amendment act 1978 it reduced the three month to two months right but the point is the fact is that it is not applied that is why i'm saying this provision is not yet been brought to force hence the original period of three months is still continuing so these are the example of some preventive detention laws you must ha have heard about MISA maintenance of internal security at right some provisions like TADA POTA so they have some provisions <coughs> with regard to this this is UAP unlawful activities prevention act which I was I have just given you as a star point now we need to talk about right against exploitation here we talk about two articles only, Article 23, Article 24. Article 23, it says prohibition of human trafficking and forced labor. And within this, it mentions word like human trafficking. What is human trafficking? It is buying and selling of human. Okay. If such thing is happening with you, then it is against your fundamental right as mentioned under Article 23. Okay. What punishment will be given? If such thing is happening with you, that is not mentioned in Article 23. Okay, for this, you need to refer a specific law made by Parliament in this regard. Apart from this, begar, bonded labor, forced labor, they are also prohibited under Article 23. Now I am making a statement, I expect you to answer. Okay, statement is a state cannot make any law compelling people to work without giving them due of their labor you have to tell me the statement is true or false i am repeating my sentence because i mentioned that forced labor is against article 20 you know forced lag uh, forced labor is against your fundamental right it is mentioned in article 23 i am saying a state slash government means i am referring to government cannot make any law making citizens do some work but you know binding you do some work without any you know due payment regarding your labor which you have done so that statement is true or false come on and it is a rapid fire round so i request your responses to be quicker 
welcome Sanjay Sajal Chalvaraj it doesn't matter whether you answer right or wrong what matters is that you have attempted this question come on <clears throat> should I repeat the question everyone bring your presence into the comment box zinda hai to zinda nazar aana bhi zaruri hai so here you can do that by being in this comment box interaction is necessary otherwise it will be a pravachan class i don't want that to happen answer is false now some of you might say that's a forced labor and in this particular statement government is actually forcing us to do something by law and not paying us so in this case government can compel you to do this for national service okay but not private party okay this is the differentiation so it is available to citizens as well as non citizens it's it also need to be you know you should keep this in mind so human trafficking in the form of i told you buying and selling of men women prostitution devdasi slavery okay apart from this it also says protection against state and private individual it means it gives protection to citizens as well as non citizens and protection against state as well as private citizens it means no one can actually do this with you right and force means physical legal economic compulsion okay when i say compulsion it means if you are paid less than the minimum wages law which is applicable in that state then also it will consider as abridgment of your fundamental right as mentioned in article 23 okay and when i say physical legal economic it means if you are uh, you made to do more work right uh, that that is also a part of you can say forced labor means in a circumstances which are not allowed as per labor law okay then it it will be a contravention of your right as mentioned in article 23 now these are some laws with regard to this uh, article 23 as i told you parliament can make law for your protection bonded labor system abolition act 1976 minimum wages act 1948 so this was an act made by parliament but various state governments also make their own act to regulate minimum wages and that is why you will find a difference between the minimum wages prescribed between in haryana to delhi to up okay so minimum wages will be different and why they are different because the living cost in different states and different areas may be different contract labor act equal remuneration act 1976 these are the example of the laws emerging from article 23 exception i told you government permit state means we are when i when i'm using the word state what does it mean you should refer the meaning mentioned under article 12 to impose compulsory service for public purpose okay for example what is happening in ukraine you know right now ukrainian government is training their civilian for military purpose right if such circumstances occur in india then indian government can also do right and now you cannot say ki how much we are going to be paid for this work which you are compelling us to do then government will and and you are saying this will be abridgement of our article 23 then government will say also read exception okay so military service social service anything can be asked okay no discrimination caste race religion class only means in this case there will be no discrimination and these are the four criteria which are mentioned then we have article 24 which talks about exploitation of child labor or you can say child so it is related to child labor please understand this particular article in two parts it means what provision says in our constitution and what different law says what is the legal standpoint with respect to article 24 now prohibition of employment of children factories etc and why it was needed reason is 
that children are most ill represented section of our society. For example, if women have certain issues, they think they are not having their rights in place, rights are not being enforced, then they can make association, they can ask, they can do a, you can say a movement. If a particular section, caste, are not having their rights entertained or they want more rights, they can also have a movement, they can also pressurize government. But do you think same can be done by children? No. That is why it is our responsibility to ensure the rights of children, right? Because you should think that if these, this is the reality of our society, so you should think in a scale manner, how it impacts the major landscape or the potential of Indian society, right? It is going to compromise on that. So it forbids employment of children below 14 years of age in dangerous jobs like factories and mines did not prohibit their employment in any harmless or innocent work. Now, please understand, there was a lot of, uh, you can say, debate on this provision earlier. Interpretation was complete prohibition. But as it was found, that time and again, reality is found that many people, many children, be, below 14 years, they are engaged into various dhaba and other activities, and even family work as well. And there was another side, many government officials used to abuse this, uh, abuse this particular reality and barge into some work which is conducted by some, you can say, family together and they are engaging some children. For example, Firozabad, you must have heard about the Bengal industry. So, take into consideration, now the idea is that they cannot be allowed to work in harmful circumstances. Another is, they cannot be allowed to work in a school time, okay? And beyond school time, they can only be engaged in family work, that is safe, okay? So this was the definition. Although many child right activists were against this definition, some child right activists were in support of this definition at least abuse of these families will stop, at least by this many children will be actually giving, getting opportunity to go into schools. Now, there are certain laws which you should keep in mind, for example, Child Labour Law Pro Prohibition Regulation Act 1986, renamed as Child and Adoles Adolescent Labour. Now, we have a law specifically establishing a statutory institution at the level of union as well as state for the protection of child rights in India. At the national level, we call it NCPCR. It means National Commission for Protection of Child Right and at the state level, a state commission for protection of child right. So whenever it comes to the uh, a debate that whether child rights are being enforced, so at the state level you should put a question on SP SPCR, what are the status? You should conduct surveys, you should, uh, you can say, channelize support from various uh, stakeholders, be it uh, civil society or government departments, you should ensure that. So SCPCR at state and NCPCR at the central level, Employment of Children Act 1938, Factories Act 1948, so these acts are still continuing, Mining Mines Act 1952, Plantation Labor Act 1951, BD and Cigar Workers Act 1966. We have Children Rehabilitation and Welfare Fund. Now, <clears throat> please understand, from legal standpoint, our children are divided into two categories. Number one, children in conflict with law. Let me note it down so that you can connect it. I think black would be more visible to you. In conflict with law. This is one category of children. They also need some kind of protection obviously, because the word children means they are not developed enough to decide their actions, what is good, what is bad for them. In conflict with law, second is in protection or you can say care, in protection care 
of law. It is also interpreted as in need of protection or care of law. Now, the Commission for Protection of Child Rights Act, so this is the overall organization responsible for this, NCPC at center and SCPC at state, in conflict with law. Whenever there is a case that some children have committed crime, so in this case, we have JJ Act. Juvenile Justice Act, which was also in news few times back, especially after Nirbhya you know, issue, right? So, in this case, the decision is taken by JJB, Juvenile Justice Board, how much punishment should be given to this particular children, child who has come in conflict with law, okay? For example, murder, decoity and other activities or theft committed by children, okay? But there are some children who are in need of protection of law. It means orphan, destitute. So in this case, we have a separate body, CWC, Child Welfare Committee. It is also known as Children Court. Okay, so two separate mechanisms are in place. And with respect to the definition of children in JJ Act, it was amended. And now, when it comes to the definition, because general definition is that below 18 years of age, you are child, right, in eyes of law. But uh, in case of Nirbhya, you know that, that uh, one of the culprit, he, he was found that he was less than 18, year, 18 years of age and that is why he could uh, get a punishment uh, of just three years, right, as per JJ Act. But later it was amended on the recommendation of Justice J.S. Verma committee report and now if someone is between 16 to 18 years of age, in this case, to take decision whether this person is a child or an adult, this decision is taken by JJB. Juvenile Justice Board is going to take decision. If JJB said that person is 17, but the mentality of that person with which that person committed crime is an adult mentality. In that case, now that child, the earlier we were considering that person as child, now since JJB has declared him as adult or her as adult, now that person will be transferred to for a trial in normal court, means a sessions court if this case of crime, right? I hope it is clear. Now, coming to right to freedom of religion, right? So we have two article in this case, article 25, article 26. The major difference between two article are, is that article 25 deals with individual freedom with respect to religion. And when it comes to article 26, it talks about religious, you know, your freedom related to religion, but in terms of group institution, so that rights associated with managing the affairs of that particular, you can say, institution. Now, just check this question out. Right to freedom of religion means religious instructions shall be provided in all government education institutions. It's a quite direct question. I would appreciate if you attempt this question. Come on. I hope this is visible on your screen. Yes. Please answer in comments. एक तो होता है इजी और एक होता है बटर सो दिस क्वेश्चन इज लाइक अ बटर रिलीजियस इंस्ट्रक्शन शेल बी प्रोवाइडेड इन ऑल एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग नो सच केस इज देयर ओके राइट टू रिलीजन डज नॉट मीन दैट इन ऑल द इंस्टीट्यूशन रिली this religious instruction will be provided. A state shall encourage religious thinking. Why would state encourage religious thinking? Bakwas hai right? Give preference to person with religious bent of mind. Sarasar, galat. Now, person shall have right to establish institution for religious and educational purposes. This is correct. So, this is one of the right you have in right to freedom of religion. So, answer is C. Okay? Now, Let's start with Article 25. Now, let's take a look over what actual clause says, okay? 
and I am also going to ask one question from this particular article. Article 25 of the constitution guarantees freedom of religion to all persons in India. Please give your focus. The word persons is used. Okay. It is not citizen. Right. And I told you express clearly that at some places the word is person, at other places the word is citizen. Right. And another word which we are going to find in article 2930 that is minority. Okay. So now it provides that all person in India subject to public order, morality, health and other provisions means these are reasonable restrictions. It means your right to religion should not contravene public order. Right. You cannot say I am going to exercise my uh, right to religion and I am going to uh, make uh, conduct a ritual in between highway. Okay, I don't, uh, I'm not going to, you know, uh, stop this ritual because this is my faith and this is my uh, fundamental right under Article 25. So, if you try to do so in between highway, then you will find a police party which will take you uh, to the Hawalat to do some seva. Okay, because it's expressively, but it is clearly say, uh, saying that it is not available in case you disturb public order, morality, health and other provisions. Okay, are equally entitled. Now these are your rights. Freedom of conscience. What does it mean? It means you can have belief in whatever religion you consider fit for you. Right. So that is that is at your internal level. Have the right to freely profess. Now profess is connected to your declaration. Yes, this is my religion. Practice. Practice includes you conducting ritual, prayer and other practices which are associated with that religion and propagate religion. And you also have this right fund, as fundamental right under article 25 that you can propagate your religion, propagate the ideas of religion so that other can also follow your religion. But as I told you our fundamental rights are qualified in nature. So that is why we have restrictions here too. Now, let us go word by word. First is conscience. It means you can choose the path you want to follow. Profess, you can declare your faith. Right to practice means ritual, ceremony, exhibition, worship, belief, idea, all of this comes under right to practice. Right to propagate. Transmission of one's belief, no right to forcible, forcible conversion. Now, take example. If Sajal, uh, wake up next morning and he uh, talked to his mother and father that last night I had a dream and I want to convert into another religion because God has given me this message and he is about 18 years of age and he has also uh, gone through polity. So his mother and father will say no you cannot do this. So he will say if you try to stop me I will go to Supreme Court using Article 32 because this would be against my individual right as given in Article 25. Because I have conscience, I have professed to declare religion and I have, I have this right to practice. And he also started from that evening also only, he started practicing that religion. Now, in the night he met his siblings and now he exercised another right, right to propagate his religion. So as his mother, father were uh, looking at him in anger, he said, no, you cannot do so. Article 25, right to propagate. I'm going to propagate my religion among my siblings. Now, so his siblings, siblings are not interested to actually go his way. So what he did, he brought some chocolates and he presented that if uh, you convert into my religion, I'll give you chocolate. Now, do you think that is also his right under right to propagate? No. Some of you might say, sir, this is forcible conversion. But chocolate, giving chocolate is not forcible. That is a choice. If they are lured towards chocolate, then they are converting. So is it against this? Uh, is, is it covered under this? No, it is not covered. It means when I say forcible conversion, it includes whether you do must use muscle power or whether you use any kind of arm twisting or whether you lure that person for any kind of you know uh, money or gifts 
that will also be considered as a you can say uh, that will be considered as illegal okay that is not covered under your right to propagate now it further provides that this article shall not effectively affect existing law and shall not prevent the state from making any law relating to what does it mean it means you have this right but a state can actually intervene in your religion also in case regulation or restriction of any economic financial political any secular activity associated with religion practice consider your practice your ritual is contravening into fundamental right of a large section can state allow you to do that no state cannot allow you to do that take example of triple talaq sabri mala temple issue what was happening in sabri mala temple issue also uh, one section was saying those who were restricting the entry of women into sabri mala temple they were saying that supreme court analysis or judgment is against our article 25 and 26 why 25 they were saying this is our in individual belief that uh, women should not be allowed because lord ayappa is celebrate uh, celebrate brahmacharya so uh, at that point of time they said no a state can intervene right if it is against the definition of morality and it causes public order disorder so uh, and you know in this particular judgment this word also became popular constitutional morality right and upsc also asked question from that now providing social welfare and reform and you can also see that sabri mala judgment or triple talaq judgment are considered as a reform and this has been done by state opening of hindu religious institutions of public character for all classes sections of the hindus this is expressly mentioned in un under article 25 now some of you might think why constitutional framers specifically mentioned the case of hindus why not other religion first of all you should know who are covered under this definition of word hindu and there's a debate over it obviously but the definition include hindus Sikhs, and jains apart from this you should also know that why this these are this provision is mentioned specifically on hindus because in hindus it is found due to this caste discrimination a section of our population is not allowed to access these religious you know, uh, locations for example our temples so this is against their article 25 this is clearly mentioned in our uh, article 25 okay now recently you saw hijab debate right and some parents were saying if we have to choose between hijab and education we are going to choose hijab because the, what is happening is against our article 25 because it is part of our right to practice our religion so on this point this judgment by Karnataka government that we are going to bring uniformity in a uh, uniform right and there will be a common code and hijab will not be allowed in school so on this point the counter argument was hijab is integral part of Islam can a state intervene into a practice which is integral part of a religion so now what is integral part of religion this particular debate is started from this Tilkayat Shri Govindalaji Maharaj case so what Supreme Court said here held that test to determine the the actual uh, status whether this particular practice is an integral part of religion it will be based on the belief which is held by majority of people of that religion this was the analysis you can read what is an integral part of religious whether it is regarded as integral to the community that religion or not so community is going to be understanding the community is going to the basis to decide whether it is integral or not okay for example a uh, kirpan kada so these are considered as integral for Sikh because it was given as a sermon by the guru but same is not true it is that the same is not true with respect to islam uh, there's a debate going on some say it is some say it is not but you should know uh, the case and what supreme court said how it is going to be determined so it is not going to be a unilateral decision of state it will be based on the specific community now these rights are subject to public order morality as i told you and state is permitted to 
what state can do regulate restrict economic financial political i have already told you provide social welfare and reform to all classes and sections of hindus i told you now next article 26 is freedom to manage religious affairs so when i say religious affairs it means it is also about managing movable immovable properties so it means we are talking about ashrams madrasas temples gurdwaras so now every religious denomination religious denomination means a organization which belongs to a particular religion okay because if there is an ashram so that ashram must be registered in someone's name there must be some group which is actually taking care of this particular area so the right to establish you have right to establish maintain institutions for religious and charitable purpose this is a fundamental right under article 26 now subject to public order morality health every religious domination shall have this right okay and what the rights include you can manage this institution establish and manage to manage its own affairs and matters of religion now this was the basis, this was one of the basis of the uh, section which was opposing the move of Supreme Court in Sabri Mala case. They were saying if constitution itself is saying that in matters of religion we can manage our affairs, then how can constitution, how can Supreme Court intervene? To own and acquire movable and immovable property, right? To administer such, such property in a way they want, but as per law. It means law needs to need not to be abridged. Now, I'm making a statement, and you have to tell me that statement is true or false. Okay. <clears throat> As per under Article 26, a particular religious group has the right to manage its affairs. As an extension of this right, a particular religious group can excommunicate a particular person from religion. So that statement is true or false. Those who are wondering what is excommunication, it means you will be considered out of religion. So is it legally possible? Is it legally allowed that yes, it is a fundamental right under Article 26? Yes, no, yes, no. Come on. Questions on my app? Ko? So, answer is it is not allowed. Okay. So, prevention of excommunication, and this was Safuddin Sahib versus State of Bombay case in 1962. And in this case, it was cleared. Ex excommunication means I told you the exclusion or expulsion of a person from a community or group which he she was a member. And in this case, excommunication was declared void. Okay, it should be clear to you. Now, three conditions of religious institution. I am using the word religious institution now. So, what is religious institution? Can one fine day Sanjay Basi Wala, so he can actually come up and say, I am purchasing a property and this property should be considered as religious institution. So, there is a criteria to that. First of all, collection of individuals who have system of belief which they regard as conducive to their spiritual well-being. This is one condition because this is a religious institution. It is not a private in institution. It is not an individual. It is a group of individuals who are part of religion. Now, common organization should be there and designate. So, they should have a distinct name. So, this is, this is the criteria to decide ki whether this institution is a religious institution or not. Please remember these kind of details because UPSC play on these lines. And these are the kind of statements we often miss while reading Lakshmikant. Now, talking about Article 27, freedom from tax and promotion. It simply means government cannot impose a tax for promotion of a particular religion. What does it mean? It means one fine day if one leader actually stood up and on uh, television and he says bhai or behno aaj uh, raat 8 baje from today you know from 8 pm now we are imposing another cess that is hindu vriddhi cess so can this happen legally 
no it will be considered as a contravention of article 27 okay this example was given so that it can connect uh, you know well in your mind okay otherwise we should have since you are you have to be part of system then you should be authentic and you should be neutral in your learning understanding and then expression please keep in mind so no tax can be imposed for promotion of a particular religion first of all it prohibits only levy of tax it means there's a difference between tax and fee fee can be taken from a, from people who are participating in a particular you can say religious congregation or particular area but tax is different tax is imposed on a particular category of people for let me tell you the difference if kumbh mela case is referred so as you go to kumbh mela so you will find that you have to pay a fees a minimum fees of 5 10 15 rupees so this fee is collected by government and then government department is spend this money for upkeeping of that area so at that point of you time you cannot say oh government is actually using this money which government has got as a revenue for promoting a particular religion no because that was a fee that was not a tax okay it was not taken from all it was taken from from those who were coming into that area for getting the service of that area okay no public money collected through taxes it means one is you cannot impose tax to promote other is the revenue you have you cannot use that revenue for promotion of a particular religion okay that would be against secular credentials so you can see that article 27 is representing secularism favoring patronizing a particular religion that is prohibited okay purpose kya is ka to control secular administration or religious institution not to promote and maintain religion so it is quite clear to you i have explained this what does it mean now article 28 talking about allowing or disallowing religious instruction instructions in institutions so just read article 28 sub clause 1 it mentions the word holy maintained no religious instruction shall be provided in any education institution wholly maintained out of state funds and UPSC play on these words wholly maintained administered established funded right so you need to give attention to these details everything will be clear nothing in clause 1 shall apply to any education institution which is administered by state now there's a difference wholly maintained by state means means government is funding the whole institution as well as administering the whole institution whole upkeep so totally owned by a state but in this case it is administered by state but established under any endowment trust which requires that religious instruction shall be imparted in that institution for example what happened some uh, some uh, you can say businessmen came together they established a trust and they pooled their money okay and they established an education institution but after that they tied up with the government that we don't have know-how of running this education institution so please you administer this education institution it means when it comes to appointment of teachers principal staff so these government employees will be administered by the government and government official of the of that particular district will take care of the administration but the establishment was happened by trust so in that case this sub clause one is not going to be applicable okay religious instruction may be given but the word is may be given i have not said you are compelled to actually be there and listen to those religious instructions there is a difference between the two as of now we are talking about given or not given okay no person attending any education institution now it is about you recognized by the state or receiving aid of the state funds shall be required now recognized by the state what does it mean every education institution which is working majorly of education institution they are recognized whether by cbsc right icsc or any state government right receiving aid out of state fund shall be required to take part in any religious instruction that may be imparted in such institution so you are not compelled to be there or to attend any religious worship that may be conducted 
in such institution or any premises attached there to unless such person or if such person is a minor in that case guardian's permission is needed. Let me share one case. In one case where Kendra Vidyalaya was in news, two children, two students, they uh, came into the assembly and they said uh, the, the prayers uh, are start, the prayers were starting from uh, uh, this mantra. Uh, the, the mantra which is uh, belonging to obviously to Hindu religion, Hindu religion. So they said we are not going to be part of this prayer. So uh, the principal said no, is it, it is our decision that every student should be part of the prayer. If you are not participating regularly then it would be considered as indiscipline. Then these students said and this, the parents said actually this is against my article, uh, my fundamental right under article 25. Because my religion says that I have to uphold the practice of my religion and I should not do that. So that principal expelled those two students. So that matter was heard by Supreme Court. So in that case Supreme Court said no. Supreme, that these children cannot be bound to be participating in religious instruction. Okay. So this was coming from article 28 sub clause 3. So now I hope this is clear to you. This is a representation of the discussion which we just had. So now attempt this question. Institutions administered by state established under any trust, government school, state university. Article 28 is applicable on. Come on. This is a good question. Take note, the word is administered. And you should also know that when UPSC is going to make a statement, UPSC will actually elaborate this. Okay? What UPSC will say? It will say ki, that uh, as per Article 28, no religious instruction will be provided in which of the following type of institution. This is how a statement will be expanded here. Consider this as a statement. Okay? Then these options will be given. Then Tell me what is the right answer. First of all, the word is administered. And I have already told you when I was explaining subclause 2 of article 28 that please remember these religious instructions are banned in wholly maintained institution. But it is administered, so it means this should not be the answer. Established under any trust and within subclause 2, I also mentioned the trust case, so this cannot be the answer. A government school, government school means wholly you know, uh, wholly owned by a state. So it means this is true. A state university, it means it is also about government wholly maintained. So it means answer is 3 and 4. Okay. Now, I am making last statement of my class. Last statement is, no government institution, government institution means wholly maintained by government, can give uh, religious instructions. The statement is true or false. Some of you might think it is quite obvious, 28 sub clause 1, but still I am making the statement. The statement is no government institution means wholly maintained by state can provide religious instruction. Its statement is true or false. Come on. answer is, some of you might think it is quite true, direct hai, article 28 sub class 1, but there is an ex exception here and UPSC play on exceptions. Whenever you see a question whose language is absolute, means when you read, so it infers that it is true in every case, then your antenna should open, you should be on high alert that whether some exceptions can be there or not. So in this case there is an exception. If there is a religious, there is an institution which is wholly maintained or funded by state or that institution was established specifically for religious purpose. In that case, this can happen. For example, Gurukul, for example, Madarsas, For example, this Waqf board, 
right so work board managing some properties and government wholly funding and managing that property or education institution then how can you say that religious instruction cannot be provided that purpose of the establishing that institution is actually providing religious inst instruction right i hope now it is clear so see you in the next video for this pdf you can connect with me in shashank tyagi for you telegram group you can shoot me a message if you find any doubt i'll be there to help you out see you